hello guys and welcome to my video welcome back to my video so if you have not yet subscribed please click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell on so that you do not miss any of my videos so today i'll be talking about the gradient descent algorithm so the gradient descent algorithm is the alg is an algorithm that we use to minimize the cost function so let's say we have a we have a function so let's say we have a function j theta theta zero and theta one so now our main aim is to is to minimize this function so we want so we want to minimize j of theta zero theta one so what we do first is we what we do first is we initialize our we initialize our function with some value of theta we initialize our our function with some value of theta zero and theta one and then we keep on changing so we keep on changing so we keep on changing theta zero and theta one until we hopefully reach the the minimum so so let me in let me explain the intuition behind gradient descent so now we are going to look at at the cost function with only one with only one parameter so that it is easier for us to explain for me to explain the concept of gradient descent so let's say we have this function j of theta j of theta and then we let's say we plot a graph we plot a graph of this uh, the range of values of theta and then this is j this is j of theta range of values of j of theta so so let's say we have this function this is this graph this is the graph of a function j theta so in this case let's say we be, we st we start with some value of theta let's say we begin with this value of theta so let, let's say in this case theta will be around four and then let's say this is three and then let's say this is two and then one and then in this case we have zero so what we want to do with gradient descent is we want to minimize we want to minimize we want to find the parameter theta where the function j theta is minimum so in this case so in this case this is the value of theta so this is the value of theta where j j of theta is minimum so in this case the parameter theta is equals to 2 where j of theta is minimum so this is the intuition be behind gradient descent is we want to minimize the value we want to minimize this function j of theta and to do that we need to we start with some value of we start with some value of theta and then we we keep on changing that value of theta until we find a value of theta where where the function j of theta is minimum so in this case the value of theta is 2 where where j of theta is minimum so now let let us continue with the gradient descent <laughs> so the, so this is the gradient descent algorithm So So this is the gradient this descent algorithm. So this is the pseudo code. We repeat until we reach convergence. So in this case we have theta of j and then we use this assignment operator 
which I will explain further as we move as we move on so now this is the learning rate which I will also talk about uh, so d d of d theta j and then j of theta 0 and then theta 1 so in this case for in this case for j takes it takes in a value of 0 or j takes in a value of 1 and then so what this statement tells us this tells us that we keep on changing the value also of theta until we reach convergence or until we reach the minimum the minimum value until we reach the minimum value of j theta or until we find the parameter or the parameters of theta zero the parameters theta zero or theta one where the function j theta zero theta one is minimum so this is the learning rate so the learning rate determines is the size determine the size of the step that we are going to take towards the towards the minimum so i'll explain this and then this is the assignment operator so unlike if we if we say j theta of is equal to theta j minus the learning rate so the assignment operator this assignment operator what this assignment operator allows us to do is that so if we take a look at, at this assignment operator this simply tells us that theta of j is similar to theta of j plus or equal to theta j plus or equal to theta j and so forth so this this allows us that if if we change this value of theta and then in the f if we change this value of theta if in the future this values of theta changes again we are going to add it to this value of theta so that's how this assignment operator works so now so now th that we have talked about the gradient descent algorithm so when we apply the gradient descent algorithm what we need to do is we need to we need to up, we need to apply we need to update it we need to update our values simultaneously so let's say let's say for example if j is equals to zero and j and then j is equal to to one so now we replace now we replace theta theta of j with theta of zero this goes to theta of zero minus alpha t over d theta t over d theta zero times j theta zero theta one and then we do the same here so we say t theta theta one is equal to theta one minus alpha d theta over d theta one times j of theta zero and then theta one so that's what we do so what we do is that we first we apply gradient descent we first apply gradient descent to this parameter theta zero and then theta theta one we apply gradient descent to both theta zero and theta one and then after we apply gradient descent to theta zero and theta one we update this value simultaneously so i'll explain the reason why we update these values <coughs> we update these values much simultaneous so what we do later is that we then say theta zero is equal to is equal to temp theta is equal to temp zero and then theta one is equal to uh, temp one so in this case t this is temp temp zero this is temp temp one so 
the reason why we update this so after applying gradient descent to both term term zero and term one we then update we then update theta zero and theta one simultaneously so the reason why we update simultaneously is that so let me show you let me show you the gradient descent algorithm example the gradient descent algorithm first i'm sorry about that So if we take a look at our gradient descent algorithm, let's say this is theta theta zero. Over to theta of to theta of zero times um, j of theta zero and then theta one. And then let's say we then we then update we then update we then up we then update i'm sorry we then update theta zero first so let's say we then update, update theta zero first sorry So we then update. So this is temp zero. So we then update theta zero first, and then the next thing, let's say we then. We then the next thing, then we then update theta theta one. T over t theta one. Uh, the j function j of theta zero and then theta one and then let's say we then update theta one in this case we just go to temp temp one so as you can see if we first update let's say if we first update theta zero let's say we first update theta zero as you can see in this as, as you can see in the next stage the value of theta zero will be updated but the value of theta one will not yet be updated so so as you can see this this will not optimize our cost function well as theta zero is already updated but the value of theta one is is we are, but the value of theta one is the value from this previous from this previous gradient descent so what I talked about simultaneous update that's why simultaneous update is, is important because if you update simultaneously then that means that the value of theta zero in this case and then the value of theta one will be recent updates the values of theta zero and theta one will be updated at the same time so this gives us consistent results this causes our algorithm to to converge to the to the minimum as compared to if we update theta zero and theta one at different times this will not cause the, this will cause our algorithm not to to converge to the global minimum so so now i'm going to so now i'm going to explain the intuition behind the gradient descent algorithm going to explain the intuition behind the gradient descent algorithm so let's say if we plot a graph so in this in this case to make it easier to explain I'm going to take a look at the cost function with only one parameter theta so that it will be easier to explain as I do not have uh, 2d 2d graphs so I'm just going to draw a one-dimensional graph so let's say if we have this graph theta 
this function j of theta. So now we are going to plot the values of theta on the x-axis, the range of values of theta on the x-axis, and then we are going to print the range of values of j theta on the y-axis. So this is our graph. So this is our graph, which is which is equal to y is equal to let's say j of theta. So this is our graph. So in this case, so in this case, when we apply gradient descent, let's say we begin, we initialize theta at this point. So we initialize theta at this point. Let let us call this point x. Yes, we do not know the value of this. We initialize theta at this point. So what we do, we need to apply gradient descent. And when we apply gradient descent, we want to take a step towards this 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 minimum. We want to talk, take a, a step towards this minimum or the value of theta. The value of theta where 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 j of theta is minimum is minimum. So in this case we first find the, the gradient at this point. So I'm sorry about that. We find the gradient at this point. So this is the gradient at this point. So if we so if you remember from high school uh, we said that the gradient is supposed to change we say that the change in y over change in x change in x x i'm sorry about my handwriting i know it's bad so this is the change in y over change in x so as you can see if we this gradient this the values of x here are positive and the values of y at this point are positive so that means this that in this case our gradient is positive our gradient is positive so when our gradient is positive then this causes our our parameters if we if our gradient is positive this will cause our gradient descent algorithm who will, will move towards or move towards the left so when gradient is positive so the gradient our the gradient descent algorithm will cause our will cause our our algorithm to move towards towards the left towards this towards this global minimum so when gradient is positive the line the line is a positive slope so this means that the gradient here is positive so this means that we are going to take a direction towards the towards the left or towards the left to the global minimum so let's also take a, another scenario where our, the gradient is negative. So if we if we plot the graph of j theta in this case plot graph of j theta against theta in this case let's say in this case we we start with some value theta we start with this some value theta and then we want to find the gradient at this point so find the gradient at this point we need to find the change in y in values of we need to ch find the change in values of x over the change of the change of values in y over the change value of x let's say if this point is y1 and then this point is y0 and if this point is uh, x0 and then this point is x1 then gradient remember i said that gradient is changing y over changing x 
So gradient at, the, at that point will be y1 minus y0 since this is the change in y over x1 minus x0. So this will give you the gradient. So in this case, the gradient is negative. So this means our slope, our slope at this point is negative. So this means that we are going to take, we are going to take a direction towards the right to the global minimum. So that's the intuition behind gradient is that we are going to take this, 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 uh, this direction towards the right to the global minimum. And then the, the, the next concept I want to talk about is the learning rate, which is very, 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 very important. So, so, so if you remember our gradient descent algorithm, theta is equals to theta minus t of t theta uh, j of theta uh, so we had the learning rate uh, which I said that the learning rate controls controls the size of steps that we are going to take towards the minimum so let's say in this case this is j theta and then this is theta and then this is something like this so let's say if we begin with some value of theta we begin with some value of theta so if the if the learning rate is too small that means that uh it would take it would take some time for algorithm to to reach the minimum so in this case this is the minimum where the the value of j theta value of j theta is minimum so here that's when the value of j theta is minimum so that means that if the learning rate is too small let's say these are the size of steps that we are going to that are taken by by the learning rate if the learning rate is too small that means gradient descent can be small slow so our algorithm can be sl can take a huge amount of time for it to reach for it to reach the global minimum so this takes this takes a huge amount of time for us to reach this global minimum so at the same time if the global minimum if the learning rate is too large this ca can cause our algorithm to overshoot to overshoot to overshoot the minimum let's say we are here we start with some value theta here and then let's say the learning rate the learning rate is large this can cause our algorithm to overshoot to overshoot this global minimum and then let's say this our algorithm will overshoot and then again let's say if we start with, with some value here and then our learning rate is is large it can cause also our algorithm to overshoot the global minimum. So we need to find a, a suitable a suitable learning rate that will cause our algorithm to converge to the global minimum. So how do you find the a suitable learning rate? So so the, this is experimental. You need to try out different range of of learning rates so that you find a learning rate which is which which will cause our algorithm to our gradient descent algorithm to reach the global minimum or the point where the function of j theta is minimum. So thanks for watching, guys. So this this is what I heard about the gradient descent algorithm. So I advise you if you have not watched uh, my videos about linear regression, I advise you to do so so that you can uh, you can understand the cost function and then like our hypothesis how it works so that you understand how the gradient descent algorithm works so thanks for watching guys in the next video i'm going to talk about the about gradient descent applying gradient descent to linear regression so if you have